gut brain connection the link to depression and anxiety with dr diana joy ostroff embark on a journey into the complex world of gut brain connection with dr diana joy author of the wisdom of well-being discover how this intricate link can influence mental health particularly depression and anxiety creating a cycle that impacts our overall well-being. Learn from Dr. Ostroff's unique insights and experience on managing thoughts, lifestyle, and natural hygiene to optimize your gut health and mental well-being. Subscribe for more enlightening discussions on this holistic and welcome to the Wellness Driven Life Show, where you're about to go on a wellness-driven ride. <music> Welcome, and let me share a little bit about the guests that we have here today. Dr. Diana Joy Ostroff, a dedicated practitioner of naturopathic and traditional Chinese medicine since 1989, began her journey to holistic health as a teenager. Her extensive study in diverse healing arts and decades-long experience in patient care have fortified her credibility. She founded the Center for Natural Healing in Hawaii, specializing in comprehensive wellness. As an author of the Wisdom of Wellbeing book series and an international speaker, she shares insights on self-care, mindful eating, and self-love, promoting an understanding of bodily efficiency and vitality. I am so pleased to help welcome to our stage today, Dr. Diana Joy Ostroff. Welcome. Thank you, April. That was a beautiful intro. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you for being here with us, Dr. Joy. Now, can you share with the audience a little bit more outside of that beautiful biography? You've got so much extensive knowledge, but let's get to know you a little bit more. Okay. Well, I've been in Hawaii. This will be my 35th anniversary uh, working here. I opened my clinic in 1989. I was one of the original naturopathic doctors that came to Hawaii. And I think I understand what it means to be in practice, because practice makes progress. And we don't just get to be great doctors by just starting out and becoming a great doctor, it takes time and it takes work. And I think for me, the transformation was when I had to really address my own health issues comprehensively and completely for the first time. And I was fortunate enough to have that awakening and awareness to do so well it was actually a, a necessity when it when i was only in my first year so that gave me a chance to say okay all this intellectual stuff i have learned and now i have an opportunity i have to prove to myself that i can actually put it to use and see that it works because up until that time i was trying to get healthy. I was praying I would get healthy. I was working on it to the best of my ability, but I was missing the mark over and over again because I didn't have to. Now, when I got to a point where I had to turn myself around, then everything changed and I made it happen. And that gave me a beautiful opportunity to realize this is actually possible for people. Up until then, I was hopeful that this would be possible for people, but I wasn't convinced because in my own life, I hadn't been able to pull it together quite enough to walk Isn't my that path. so true, right? When we uh, 
you know, we practice and learn a lot of different things. And until we have the opportunity to apply it ourselves, we don't really have the full scope, the big picture understanding, right? I say it and liken it to, uh, for a good example, is in business, right? If we want to step into leadership uh, positions, then it sure does help when we've had boots on the ground in all of the different positions where we've started throughout the company and we know all the acts, uh, excuse me, we know all of the, the things, the ongoings of the company, the positions, and that better enables us to communicate with others to really know the, the understanding of all of those things, right? And it's the same with anything said. And as we go into leadership positions or coaching positions or, you know, doctorate positions, it sure does help to have that understanding in order to help our clients and our patients uh, the best possible way. So, Dr. Diane, do you mind walking us through that journey that you had? What was it that was ailing you that really made you start having a different approach to what you practiced and preached? My journey actually started April. Uh, well, when I was two years old, I was rushed to the ER for an exploratory surgery. No one knew what was wrong with me other than my gut blew up like a big honeydew melon and I couldn't poo. And back then, and probably still today, unfortunately, the doctor didn't question, what have you been feeding this had they been, had they inquired, they may have learned that my well-meaning grandfather, who came from Russia on a boat when he was a kid, he knew very little about nutrition, but he took over the job of feeding me because my mother had passed when I was born. And he was doing his best to make me happy. And so he would give me whole milk, cow's milk and ice cream because he wanted me to be happy and ice cream tastes so good. And it took a, you know, it, over time, my belly just blew up and my gut was so inflamed. And the doctor back then didn't really have much to say about the inflammation. So he didn't see anything really wrong, but he did take out my appendix just to, you know, have something to say and, to, and do. And I proceeded to have stomach aches for the next 25 years. Mm. And then the stress of school, and I went, I was in school for 12 years from, you know, right after high school, pre-med and my BA, I, my undergraduate work and then medical school and it was stressful and then I moved to Hawaii and suddenly I'm faced with okay now I have the real world to deal with I had to start a, a practice I had to work on the side because I needed money I was still in school so I was riding my bike to school to do my traditional Chinese medicine finish that that education and the stress was insurmountable and I couldn't sleep. And so I went to another well-meaning doctor who gave me a Chinese medicine that lo and behold, after I took it for a while, I was feeling much worse. I was sleeping, but I was feeling much worse. And come to find out, I ended up being diagnosed with a fatal liver disease at 29. And I was told to get my affairs in order. And of course, I didn't have any affairs back then at 29. So I just said, okay, it's time. I need to put in, I need to stop faking it because you know, I looked pretty good back then. And I was okay. I still had problems with my stomach, my energy. I just, you know, hadn't gotten it all together, all the pieces in place. And um, I took that year and I just worked part time. I stopped school for that period of time. And it, I devoted myself and I really went above and beyond practicing what I learned in that, those last 12 years and applied it to myself and more. Mm 
until I felt better at the end of that journey, like I had never felt. I had the energy of a 10 year old. I, I didn't have the interest in hanging out with adults. I wanted to go horseback riding with kids and be in the ocean from morning to night. I was so in energetic and happy. It was the first time in my life I had felt alive without being encumbered with pain and depression and fatigue and just insecurity. So that's where I was really lucky to just be hit with it right at the beginning. Up until then, I... You know, I called myself a doctor, but I didn't believe that I was really capable of mm -hmm. being. So that I was a mentioned confidence. Yes. Yeah. That was a major turning point for me. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Now, your story is incredible from the get go. You know, that from two years of age where you didn't, I mean, it took 20 some years to really have a better understanding of the gut health and why you were having so many complications throughout life because of the things that our system really doesn't care for. And, you know, and then on top of that, more and more life issues, lack of sleep, stress, all of those things that really cause uh, the imbalance and our bodies to, to scream out in havoc, right? Like uh, we're not functioning properly. Something needs to change. And you mentioned that you, you went and saw a Chinese uh, doctor and they gave you some, something that you could take, but it didn't necessarily work. And we, there's it actually, so much it actually was later recalled because it was causing people oh. to die of liver oh disease. Oh my goodness. And I only found out like one or two weeks after I was diagnosed. Oh, so dear. really I dropped that, that medicine, you know, learned a big lesson. You know, I had taken herbs and I kept taking it because I was sleeping, did not know what the impact it was having on my liver. And that's one of the things I caution my patients about because every medicine, herb, substance, food, thought, everything we put into our bodies and our minds are going to have an effect on our body and our mind. And so we have to be so aware. I was doing a workshop here uh, this weekend in my center. I had a full house and we were talking about how our thoughts impact every aspect of our life now and for decades to come basically program our reality and you know if we think that we need something like that to sleep rather than understanding no it's more complex than that yes definitely herbs help but we cannot just rely on an herb to make us better we have to do the work that's foundational including getting our gut microbiome right getting our diet right the nut the diet isn't exactly the same for every human being. A diets have to be tailored to an individual. Gut microbiome health has to also be geared towards an individual. So we work very holistic and comprehensive for each person. And it's a so different- Diane, I love that you, that you bring all of those things up, that everything has to be tailored, that not one thing fixes all, right? We're all so unique and individual and you know based on our our biological aspects and our histories and our cultures and our environments and all the things uh it certainly makes a big difference on all of that and i, I think that you learned that very very early on when you were given something that's supposed to be this natural supplement that was not okay with you making you dive into exploration of so many different things until even years later after that, you finally felt really good. Now I've done some research on your, your natural center and it looks so awesome. And you have a few of them throughout uh, Hawaii and you offer a lot of different things. And I think that's what I really appreciate is there, there's a variety of things that can really help us obtain an overall wellness. Yes. There is. And I can order labs from any lab in the world to get any kind of information I need. So though we do have a gorgeous center, but not everyone lives in Hawaii and not everyone can fly over, though many people do. I have many patients that fly over once a year, twice a year, quarterly. And, you know, 
we get more information of, on them and we help them further. However, I do work remotely with people because I have the tools that I need to do that. Dr. Diana, that sounds like a very exciting vacation, if you wouldn't uh, mind me saying so. You know, okay, yes, I'm going to go to Hawaii a couple of times a year to get my healing fix, you know, so I can feel really relieved and balanced as I go back into the, the busy world. And so I think that that's such a beautiful thing that you offer to everyone. And we're going to step into our commercial. And when we get back, I would love to go back into and highlight more about our thoughts. And so not only is this it's a whole uh, approach to wellness when it comes to what we put in, on, and around our body, but our thoughts matter too. So stay tuned. Are you ready to take control of your ride to wellness? Rev up with Driven Living. Visit www.drivenliving.com and buckle up for a journey. Get exclusive access to our Wellness Driven Life Show guest portal, where you can dive deep into the minds of our esteemed guests. Sign up for our newsletter and get insider scoops on these distinguished personalities. It's like having a backstage pass to their life-changing wisdom. But that's not all. You'll also receive a free hug. You heard me right, a free hug. An enlightening ebook from the Driven Living team. Discover the science-backed benefits of hugging yourself. It's a fill-up for your wellness tank. Because at Driven Living, we believe in fueling your journey to wellness, both physically and psychologically. So what are you waiting for? Visit www.drivenliving.com today. Welcome back, everyone. Dr. Diana Joy Ostroff here with us today. And Dr. Diana, I think I saw you giving yourself a self I did. <laughs> that was beautiful. I love seeing that. Uh, you know, the importance of when we talk about self-care and self-love, uh, that is an essential piece, isn't it? And knowing that we can give ourselves the affection and love, uh, and it's not always found outside of ourselves. And that's a very important life lesson, isn't it? I think we all come to a point where we don't always have something outside of us to give us all of the things we need. That said, Dr. Diana, something that I am very, very intrigued by, we have many guests on the show. And one of my favorite topics is about our spiritual health. So when we talk about our physical health and well-being, our intellectual health and well-being, which we mentioned prior to the commercial, that our thoughts really have an effect on our health, right? Our emotions, our beliefs. But how does that tie in, in your eyes, spiritually as well? That's a great question and a big one. So basically, you know, when it comes to this topic of health and our thoughts, we go into automatic behaviors most of the time. So about between 90 and 94% of the time, we're operating from our subconscious or other than conscious mind. We only use our conscious mind about 6% of the time unless we're actively focusing on it. So in other words, we we might think to ourselves, oh gosh, I'm so tired. So then we manifest that energy of fatigue. And then by the time we crawl out of bed, all we want to do is go to the fridge and eat something that's going to be make us feel worse because we already don't feel good. And these thoughts just perpetuate and feed on one another. And then that upsets that the body and the gut biome because the brain and the gut are intimately connected via the vagus nerve. So the messages our brain is telling us, the gut is receiving, the foods that our gut is receiving send messages back to the brain. So it becomes a perpetuating vicious cycle. But we wake up in the morning if we have a notion that, okay, it's automatic for us to go into a negative state. 
or to be in one. If you think of a newborn baby, what does a newborn baby do? They come into the world and they cry, they emote, they're not happy, they're exposed now to the outside where they don't have a clue. It's the automatic response to be in a negative state. We have to work with ourselves every single day, sometimes every hour, every minute. minute. Second. <laughs> every second so that we can yeah. shoot ourselves because it's automatic to go into the negative. It's not that we're stupid. It's that we have not trained ourselves. And but more than that, if if we're not aware of that, then of course we can't train ourselves. We don't think of it. But what's worse is that that negative automatic negative state creates depression and feelings of unworthiness and self unlove. And even if we have a love from the outside world, if we haven't cultivated that inner love and that self love, and that was a big missing piece for me. I mean, I lost my mother when I was under five months old and I didn't have the reassurance that I was okay, that I was good, that I was pretty. I don't think I ever looked at myself in the mirror face on until I was 25 or 30 years old. I, it's like when brush just in teeth looking at the sink and looking at the toothpaste go down the drain because there was no awareness of self-esteem or self-worth or self-love. We just aren't taught that often. And hopefully in this next coming generations, if we have, if I have, and you have anything to do with it, we can help inspire people to look at themselves, make eye contact with yourself and with others, recognize your inner beauty, recognize the little baby inside that didn't get all the love that she or he needed. And we need to beam that love into ourselves so that we can then share our best self with the outside world, with other people that we need. Because my experience, I don't know about you, but when I walk by a stranger and make eye contact, the first thing they do is pick up their phone and look like that. They're, they're afraid, you know, 90% of the time to make that contact. And it's only after we've been through something that really stirred the soup for us. Mm. That we, if we, mm. Yeah, I want to talk about that for a minute, Dr. Diana Joy, because uh, what you're saying, so much of this is, is very pertinent. Uh, you talked about not having your mother around um, when you were infant. And there's so much research and science to go behind, you know, having that human connection the from the mother, the, uh, you know, the contact um, while breastfeeding, et cetera, uh, swaddling, all of those things that really are essential pieces to having um, this this first understanding of love, of comfort, of safety and security. And I love that you brought up, I didn't look at myself in the mirror until my 20s. And I think that that is a huge thing to bring up that self-reflection, the self-love and being able to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I love you. I um, And I don't know about you and your experience when you first came into really having this understanding of loving yourself. But for me, it was coming to this uh, sense of even being able to make love to myself, you know, the way that we project love towards someone else, towards our children, our lover, uh, you know, others is, you know, can we do that in all of the ways that we do for others? And um, so I'd be curious to know what that was kind of like for you. You mean coming into that place where I realized I need to. You Just know, loving where you really knew and accepted uh, loving yourself fully. Yes, I remember the instance. I was doing a psychotherapy course in my third year of medical school, and I was uh, partnering with one of my classmates, Shondor Weiss, who was a very loving, dear, spiritual man. And we were standing across from each other, and he said the words, you deserve to be loved. And I had never heard anything like that in my life. I mean, even my grandfather, he adored me. He was my primary source of love once we moved to New Jersey from Philly. And he would say something like, I don't know why, but I do. 
you know, and it's, he didn't say, I love you. I, my father didn't say, I love you. My sister, you know, we just thought, and uh, my cousin called me ugly. So I had, didn't have any kind of, I didn't know that I was lovable. And the depression and the sadness that that caused, the emptiness, I, I would, I remember distinctly thinking to myself all the time, what is wrong with me? And so at that moment that he said that, you deserve to be loved, it was like, I just cried. And I guess it opened something up because I started healing after that. That was an awareness piece, it, you know, like you talked about. It was just an, an uh, aha moment. Mm. I don't even know that I heard the word. And so, but then it took me many, many, many years, you know, even decades, because I wasn't really working on my emotional, mental, psychic piece thoroughly until my 40s. Yeah. I really started to notice the negative patterns of speaking to myself and the negative messages that I still sent to myself and the way that I just was not really in a place of loving who I am. And well, Dr. Diana, you bring a great point to the forefront where we um, we have these cycles, right, of, of thought patterns. And I love your infancy uh, example of we come out screaming and crying and we're just uh, not liking this, right? And so it's a very human, natural, in this physical plane response to not be satisfied, right? And so our, our brains keep going back in this loop. And it is that, you know, um, the unconscious part where we need to start, you know, tuning in uh, on how to think differently. But again, it starts with the awareness and then the consistency of, and you said, I love too, that you said it took me years and years. It wasn't until my forties that I started really learning how to hone in on those thought patterns that I'm having. And I, I think that that is very essential for everyone to know. No, one, it's not your fault because this is innately how we're supposed to be responding. You know, the, the mind uh, or the body is a robot controlled by the mind. And if we know that, when we know that, we can start understanding and conditioning it differently. So I, I think that that is very key that it's this is a consistent thing. It's not overnight and it's a lifelong process. And to me, I'd love to know your thoughts on this, but that's where the spiritual aspect comes in. You know, we come into this world having to overcome and learn and grow and expand for our soul's evolution. Absolutely. Well, I don't use the word having to, I would use the word we get to. <laughs> yeah. so a lot of people never do. And yeah. because a lot of people don't become aware of it, that it's an opportunity. Even when a patient comes in sick, I say, okay, what is the opportunity here? We get to become someone completely different and we can completely transform our mind, body and soul very holistically in, within one year which seems may seem like a lot. I, the physical, we can transform in months, but to transform the whole way of thinking and being takes so much time and practice, and we have to keep doing it. Like even if I have a, if I'm having a bad day or if I, my son is hurting or if my, uh, you know, a staff is leaving or something and I'm troubled, I have to tap into, okay, what do I need to do to, feel good to get into that receptive mode of trusting and loving and knowing that it's up to me to, to program and invite wonderfulness mm. and beauty and love into my life. Only the way we are being are we going to attract that back, just like you and I connecting, is that we would not be in resonance if we weren't both being or of a nature that we're receiving each other and accepting each other and recognizing each other's strengths and deficiencies. We, none of us are perfect. And if we're judging others, we're judging ourselves 
way worse. So I heard a song <laughs> once, if, you, if they're talking like that to their kid, can you imagine what they're saying to themselves? Mm. And that's pity. That's really sad because okay. that's a cycle of self-abuse that keeps getting perpetuated from generation to generation. Well, you mentioned about, you know, uh, you know, if it's up to us to help teach our children, especially in that self-love to, you know, show our our children to look in the mirror and say, I love you, you know, and not have them wait until they're in their 20s. And that self-talk is the exact same thing. Now, that said, Dr. Diana, you, you talk about how it's up to me to it's that self-responsibility, right? It all starts with us first in order to make a greater change first with us and then with the world around us because those frequencies are just spreading out those patterns and those feelings and emotions. But what are some of the things that you do? What are some tips that we can give the audience of how you bring yourself back into a positive mindset? I meditate. Mm. And I wake up in the morning, and this is in my first book, The Wisdom of Well-Being, Your Health is in Your Hands. The first chapter states, when I wake up in the morning, I go freshen myself, use the bathroom, come back to bed, I sit, or I lie down if I'm still feeling tired, and I thank God, or I thank the universe. You can thank whoever. You can thank your higher self. You can thank yourself. You can thank your bed. You can thank anything or anybody or any any essence for whatever amount of sleep that I got. Thank you, God, so much for the sleep. Thank you. Please help me be better today than I was yesterday. And I sit and I meditate and I focus on my breathing and I allow my body to relax and I bring myself to a peaceful place and I allow myself to reflect on my dreams or any thoughts that come and go. I don't put an urgency to stop thinking. If I do notice that I'm getting caught in thoughts, I do my best to let it go. But meditating is not an easy thing to do. So we can't be, well, we can, but I encourage that we don't be hard on ourselves. There are times even, I started meditating at 20. There are times that I still don't find that ability to just quiet the mind. I'm like, no, I have to get up. However, I never get up without thanking God for the mm -hmm. sleep I had and for giving me the opportunity to be a little better today than I was yesterday. And I've been saying those prayers for over 10 years. And the way I look at it is if I can be a little better today than I was yesterday, and I keep doing that every day for the rest of my life, I am going to be so amazing when I'm getting close to my last day. And that's my ultimate goal is that every day I have an opportunity to work myself to the highest level of spiritual beingness so that my last day on this planet, I am in a state of absolute bliss because I've been working on myself every day day of that. And that doesn't mean I do everything perfect. It could be one thing. It could be one email that I make a little nicer or one text that I add an emoji to make it sound sweet if it's just direct or one nice thing I say to one of my sons rather than giving criticism, I give praise or, or acknowledging my team of amazing people that work with me and for me, my medical assistants, and how amazing they're doing before I give them the other feedback. So just little ways that, because we can only feel better by making someone else feel better. And that was one of the things I learned when I, I went to Japan to study, to do some of my healing work. And we learned that by healing others, you'll heal yourself. And I truly believe that that's why at this age, I am so healthy. I'm, I probably feel better now other than I don't have the same physical strength that I had when I was in my 20s. However, I have a, a different kind of strength and wisdom and inner love and inner peace that I have never experienced. And that I would not trade for the world. If you ask me what I would go back to my 20s, I would not. I found the 20s to be very, very difficult.
Hmm. Well, I, you know, you, you bring in, like you said, you're at a different state where you have so much wisdom and you certainly have brought that to the forefront where when we are giving, uh, you know, being so grateful, uh, that is one of the key things that we should be expressing in order to really rise those vibrations, raise those vibrations, excuse me. And so you also brought about that you want to improve. You say, how can I be better? And I think that progress is such a key element as well. When we feel like we are going to be making progress in something and we're excited about that, that really gets us excited about waking up and getting out of bed in the morning, right? And serving others. That was another key thing that you mentioned when we get to serve others. And so all of those are really beautiful things that you have brought to us today, Dr. Diana. Thank you. Thank you. I love to share and I love to, I love to help people. And I love my most gratifying moments are when my patients come back after one week or two weeks or any amount of time. And they say, I feel so much better. Thank you. And it just, that's what makes me happy. Dr. Diana, what, um, I have a question for you because you mentioned when I leave this, uh, when I leave this earth, um, I want to be in this emotional state, this higher vibration, right? And so I would like to know how important is it to you to be in a certain vibration when we do leave this physical plane? How important is it? I don't know because I haven't reached that yet. Uh, I think that we, we all, I believe, want to be happy. And we all want to be healthy and we all want love. So those are common elements. So what do we need to do today? I think to myself, what do I need to do today to feel healthy, to feel happy and to feel loved? And that's what I set myself out to do every day because my it's it could be the first day or last day of our life every day we can make it make believe it's the first day you know it may be so different for someone to shift from a negative state to a positive state but what if it could just be thought of this is the first day i'm going to practice this and see what happens with some of my patients they work on this and their marriages heal their relationships with their children heal their relationships with their bosses heal they no longer want to have a divorce i mean this is so powerful because it's not about the other person if we're having a problem with our boss and with our spouse and with our kids and with our siblings it's not them it's us so what do i need to do today to create the state i want to be in today now uh, most people according to american medical standards only 12 percent of the population is considered healthy despite the fact that there were 6.8 billion prescriptions filled in 2021 so if you don't feel good like when i had stomach aches I want to be happy, but my stomach is so uncomfortable, and it's it's un, it was uncomfortable to point that I it, I'm worried. Am I going to be like this forever? Like this is plaguing, and if 88 percent of the population is plagued with worrying about their cancer or their high blood pressure, a patient came yesterday. She's rushed to the ER because her plus pressure went up. Most likely, there were things that in her lifestyle she could have done differently. So we're working on those. But, you know, every day is an opportunity to see what can I do right now to calm myself, to do self-care, and to seek out a person that can actually help us because our medical doctor may not be able to. You know, oftentimes if, I, if a patient is waiting to see a specialist, they can wait for four to seven months. And in the meantime, if they sp seek somebody like me, we can shift them in one to three weeks. And so my question is, 
Why wait? If you're not feeling well, pick up the phone, seek someone who can help you. If you need someone local, find someone local, but if don't wait and don't suffer in silence, because the only reason I that as a kid, I didn't have a mother. Most of the people will tell their mother, but our mother can't help us. The mother will take us to the doctor and that could be the wrong route. So we have to seek out those people. Like people will look at your podcast to get spiritual inspirational message. They need to seek out someone like me or if they don't need to, they get to seek out someone like me who can ship them into a direction of healing the body. And just so you know, it's it does take time. So you have to have a willingness to do the work that's going to be required. It's not a quick fix. Hell is not, not quick the, It's not the Band-Aid fix, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Dr. Diana, you, you have so many great points. And, you know, when we approach our overall well-being, you know, you talked about how I have this incredible dis-ease in my body. I, I'm in pain. I hurt. It's difficult to have a positive mindset and be joyful when you're in pain, isn't it? And so that's why it's just so important to be able to really approach overall well-being on all of those different aspects, spiritual, and men uh, mental, emotional, all of those things, and the physical too. So it's really this overall comprehensive look at overall well-being and not just that Band-Aid fix because it's just going to keep coming back. And again, it's about maintaining that and um, just keep rolling with the, the constant thing. Like you discussed meditation, which is a huge, huge benefit for us. I mean, now there's, which is really cool, all of the science backing it on how it literally does have an effect on our health and, you know, how we feel. And so because of that, you know, you, you mentioned that even now, you know, I started in my twenties and even now I still sometimes struggle, but I never leave without saying thank you. So you have given so many incredible tips and tricks, Dr. Diana. Is there anything else that you want to share with our audience today? Yes. I would like to let people know because I really believe based on my 35 years of experience, helping tens of thousands of people that people are saying easy for you you're pretty, you're this, you're that, you know what to do, you have the tools. We, it is very difficult and I know it for people to get into a positive mental state when they're not feeling good. And there is very much a hierarchy of healing. And the first level is the physical. So with a baby, you can't ask a baby to stop crying if they need to be fed. You can't ask them to stop crying if their stomach hurts or if they're, they have diaper rash. So I would like listeners to understand that really health is number one. Now, the thought is I'm going to take care of myself and employ enough self-care, self-respect and self-love that I am going to seek someone that can help me with my health because I don't think I'm going to be able to feel very good spiritually, mentally and emotionally while I feel this sick or I'm this concerned about whether or not I'm going to get cancer as a result of my obesity or multi-diverse conditions. So I would say, please reach out, find a great naturopath. And I mean a great one because a good one will help you over time. A great one will get you going fast. And I would have to say, I work really fast. I get really good <laughs> results. My specialty is getting results. And I invite people from all over the world. And I have patients from all over the world calling in to see me and coming to visit. So I and I do have another book. Uh, uh, I have two other books. I'll mention the one, The Joy of Eating for Kids and Their Moms, because we're, we were talking about gut health. And it's all about our nutrition and our gut health, our ability to digest, process, assimilate, utilize the nutrients and eliminate the waste without taking in and releasing what we don't need, our bodies become stagnant. 
So we definitely have to take care of our insides. Oh, that's beautiful. And, you, you know, absolutely. I, I have a copy of your first book and I think it's incredible. I think it has so much information in it when it comes to self-care. And so you certainly do bring that to the forefront. And it's very apparent that with your own experience as a young child having, you know, going through excruciating pain at such a young, young age, why, uh, you know, what we eat at, uh, in what we feed our parents, you know, because that's within our control to our children is really a passion aspect for you. So again, thank you so much, Dr. Diana Joy. I think we live in such a cool day and age where you are able to serve people globally. I mean, how awesome is that? It's amazing. It's really amazing. And, and being in Hawaii, I sometimes will see 25 different ethnic backgrounds of people in a day. And that is really amazing. I love that. I get to know so much about so many people. And the, the one thing about me is that when I work with my patients, I do get to know them because if we don't know what's going on with them and just treat a stomach ache, it's not going to yeah. It's not going to stick. No, nope. so, getting down to the root cause is essential, isn't it? Well, Marie, thank you so much. I want to make sure that everyone knows where to find you. Your website has been displayed for those of you watching and viewing in that way. And for those of you who are listening in, her website is www.naturalhealinghawaii.com. Easy peasy, www.naturalhealinghawaii.com. This is also in the description below. So always our guest info and how to contact them, learn more about them is in our description. So again, Dr. Diana, it has been amazing to have you on the Wellness Driven Life Show to share your stories your insights, your wisdom, your knowledge, offer uh, your services to our audience. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you, April, for having me. I'll see you again. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and thank you to our audience. Without you, the show wouldn't be possible. So thank you so much for tuning in. Goodbye for now. And Aloha. we will see you next time. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs>